South Carolina is probably not the first place most people think of when they hear the term blues music, but the Carolinas actually have a long and storied blues tradition that goes back well over a hundred years. The guy we're going to talk about today is a household name in a kind of roundabout sort of way because of his connection to rock royalty. Today we're going to talk about the life and music of Pink Anderson. Pinkney Pink Anderson was born in 1900 in Lawrence, South Carolina. He grew up in the Spartanburg area in South Carolina's upstate and called this home for the rest of his life. Little is known about his early life, but by the age of 14, he began his musical career with a traveling medicine show. Dr. William Kerr's Indian Remedy Company medicine show would be his main gig for the next 31 years. Touring medicine shows traveled throughout the U.S. in the 19th and early 20th centuries. Various entertainers like dancers, acrobats, magicians, and musicians like Pink were used to draw crowds. When a crowd gathered, the pitch man, often posing as a doctor, would sell the crowd on bogus miracle medicines. These snake oil remedies called patent medicines were touted as cures for a long list of ailments. In 1916, Pink met Blind Simi Dooley, who taught him blues guitar. The two would be musical partners for years, and when Pink wasn't touring with the medicine show, they would busk in the street and play get-togethers in the Greenville, Spartanburg area. This was Piedmont blues country. The Piedmont's upbeat ragtime sound stood in contrast with the grittier sound of the Delta. Like Delta blues, Piedmont blues enjoyed its heyday in the 1920s and 30s. Pink was well versed in the alternating thumb picking that characterized the style and his picking could get especially intricate. When Dr. Kerr retired from the medicine show business in 1945, Pink took up touring with the medicine show of Patawatomi Indian and former vaudevillian Leo Chief Thundercloud Cadot. This would be one of the last traveling medicine shows in existence, holding its final event in 1972. During his tenure with the show, Pink partnered with the show's longtime harmonica player, Peg Leg Sam. This gig lasted until 1957 when health issues forced him to back off from the road. Through the 1960s, he continued to make appearances and was even featured in the 1963 film, The Bluesman. In 1964, he suffered a stroke that ended his ability to tour. After this point, he mostly stayed home only playing for friends while sometimes selling liquor and running crap games out of his house. He made a few final appearances in New York and Boston in the early 70s with his student Roy Bookbinder accompanying him on the guitar. Pink died of a heart attack in 1974 at his home in Spartanburg at the age of 73. It's almost impossible to talk about Pink Anderson without mentioning the connection his name has with a certain legendary British rock group. Founding member Sid Barrett named his band after Pink and North Carolina bluesman Floyd Council after reading their names in the liner notes of a Blind Boy Fuller album called Country Blues 1935-40. The record reads, quote, Curly Weaver and Fred McMullen, Georgia born but more frequently to be found in Kentucky or Tennessee, Pink Anderson or Floyd Council. These were among the many blues singers that were to be heard in the rolling hills of the Piedmont or wandering with the streams through the wooded valleys. So Pink Floyd could have been called Curly Fred. 
Most of Pink's recorded material was done later in life, but there are a few pre-war pieces. Pink's earliest recordings were a couple of sides he made with Simi Dooley in 1928. The two traveled to Atlanta to record four songs for the Columbia label. He wasn't recorded again until 1950 when folklorist Paul Clayton found him playing at the Virginia State Fair. These songs would be released in 1956 on a shared album with fellow Carolina bluesman Reverend Gary Davis called American Street Song. The album was later rebranded Gospel, Blues, and Street Songs and features Pink on one side and Davis on the other. In 1961, he recorded for the Bluesville label and produced enough material for three albums to be released. These albums showcase the diversity of Pink's repertoire. The bluesmen of his time would have been expected to know songs from multiple genres in order to please audiences. Blues, hillbilly songs, and gospel can all be found among his recordings. Pink's version of Frank Stokes' I Got Mine, a comical song centered on illegal gambling, is one of his most popular pieces. I went down to a big crap game where well, it certainly was against my will. I lost every dog on nickel I had but a greenback dollar bill. There was a forty dollar bet laying on the floor, my buddy's point was nine. When the police came, they caught all of us. If you've enjoyed this look at Pink Anderson, please consider tipping via Patreon or PayPal, link below, and please like, subscribe, and share.